Cheryl, when you deal with a person who has gone through this, mm -hmm. and they did it maybe, let's say, 15 years ago, they're teenagers, and uh, didn't want to have the baby, didn't want their mom and dad mm -hmm. to know about it, so she secretly took care of this. Yeah. And then it doesn't go away. Right. What is it that haunts her? I know it may be mm -hmm. a number of things, but describe for folks who are listening what it is that the person struggles with yeah. following a decision like that. That looked like a convenience. It's going to deal with it. It's a quick fix. I'm not in love with the guy. He's out yeah. of my life. You know, I think the biggest thing they struggle with is emptiness. Mm. There's something that just feels empty, yeah. not right, something that's missing. And again, the symptoms that come along with that, you know, that we have to get to that place, that the emptiness and what's causing it. But are, is the depression, the anxiety, suicidal thoughts, suicidal attempts that have been going on through the years. And they don't connect that mm -hmm. on their own. No, no, but that is what's there, is that emptiness and the something's missing, something's not right. Mm. You know, I feel like someone is missing. And people who have gone on and had children even, you know, there's something there too mm. that a lot of times they won't even bond with their children because of that. Oh. And they're not understanding why am I not bonding with my kids. Mm. And so we will get to that root issue and find the abortion you know, that was there, and mm -hmm. the loss, and the deep sorrow and sadness that yeah. comes from that when yeah. they get to the heart of it. Yeah. You mentioned earlier when we talked about this, a very touching story, which about brought me to tears when I first heard you describe it, where you had the woman who worked through this, mm -hmm. and then you said, we're going to go further. Yeah. Describe that. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was a, a terrific a, idea like, that you yeah. followed through on. Right. Um, a lot of times what we'll do with abortions, um, it's very powerful in a group setting, but just as equally when you're in an individual counseling yeah. as well. But um, I'll have them write a letter to the baby and tell that baby everything they need to tell that baby. And usually in those letters, there are written words of just, of course, immense sorrow mm -hmm. that they took that child's life. They say that. Yes. Oh, yes. That, that's always in there. It's all That always comes in, in, it seems, and how very sorry they are. Do and they write it with you, or do they write it on their own? On their own. And then on they, their own. And then they read it. They'll read it? Aloud. Wow. There's, very, there's a lot of power in reading something aloud. Wow. The sp that spoken word is very I'm not powerful. Even there the word to touch <laughs> yeah. by it. Wow. Very powerful, and and you know sometimes people say, "Would you read it for me?" I'm like, mm, "No." no <laughs> you know, this is the painful part of it. You know, sometimes it feels worse before it gets better, but um, you know the immense sorrow they have of taking that child's life. Yes. But also the part, because we've been working through the loss and working through that grieving process, mm -hmm. you know, of, you know, acceptance yeah. of what was done and the forgiveness and accepting and receiving the forgiveness of, of God. But um, That's a pretty long letter. Oh, yeah. It's a long letter. And, and also about, they, I, I asked them to write about, you know, imagining, you know, go ahead. You know, you don't know for sure, but, you know, Whatever's on your heart, boy, yeah. girl, whatever the case right. is, you know, just write to that child. If you want to give that child a name, it was a person that, that what they say it, that what they thought at one time was a blob, they're recognizing as a child that was knitted in their womb, yeah. was a baby. And so that's very powerful, too, to name the child. And so we go through that process, and I had found years ago a angel wing with a little baby in it and so I will usually take them outside under a tree have the, that there and so they come upon it and they're like oh, oh wow and but we read the letter to that baby <laughs> and so it's very very emotional so oh, we actually have a service for the child right there right there and then we will literally lean down and we will bury the letter into the ground and cover it with rocks or whatever, and usually put a little cross stick on top of it. And um, we, we pray, and we release it. Tell me why that is effective. Freedom. Freedom. Closure. Closure. Yeah. Freedom is huge. And they've never had it before. No. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I always think about, you know, when Jesus said, you know, it says in Isaiah, he came to set the captives free yeah. and the bondage yeah. that people are in for all of those years, mm -hmm. even as believers, yeah. they're in bondage to their past sins. Mm -hmm. And so you know, even if they've repented of it, they maybe have just never gone through that process of truly grieving that loss, truly recognizing this is it the It really baby. puts flesh around does. the story, doesn't it? Absolutely around the, does. the child. Right. Uh, in, you know, in our day when it's so quick and so shallow and frequent, uh, it, it's fetal tissue. Yeah. It's an it. Mm-hmm. And, and you don't let them get away with that. No, it's not a blob. You right. know, I think right. it's very interesting, too. When you look at the symptoms that come out of depression, you know, there's a statistic that says, I think it's 160% of women who abort over women who deliver end up in a psychiatric unit within three months after their abortion over women who actually deliver their children. And that statistic stays high for up to four years. And so the, psych the psychological symptoms that come about, they're right. tremendous. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely mm -hmm. tremendous. And I find that, you know, when you're looking at some of those symptoms we've talked about with depression and emptiness right. and low self-worth and why, you know, yeah. this, you know, the, you know, why am I here even now for themselves? Because yeah. they have this guilt and they're unholy and they're unclean mm -hmm. and they're dirty. And where is this coming from? You know, there's a reason yeah. that that's there because that wasn't a blob.